Hello and welcome to the 2021 World Dutch Championship. And an extra warm welcome to our viewers from around the world. I am Stephanie Scabo. This is my co-host, Lars Sunsba. How are you guys doing? Doing, doing, we're doing good, aren't we, <laughs> Lars? <laughs> we're coming to you live uh, from uh, Oslo, Norway. And uh, we were just watching uh, the new series called Dutch or Die, which involves Ingrid Bru and uh, Emil Liebeck, our last year's winners. They were, uh, it's a beautiful show. You guys should probably, probably just pause this whole thing right now and watch that instead, no. But they were, uh, in the short interview that we had uh, time for, they were talking about their favorites. Emil wouldn't say anybody. Uh, Ingrid uh, just wanted everybody to have fun. Of course, they're both out with injuries. But today is gonna be amazing. Today is going to be epic. The weather, the audience, the the, the, the whole sickness of last year has died out. Now it's time to just get together and, and have a bunch of fun. Um, we have a little special treat. The test divers that we're going to be watching first off here are two uh, contestants from their own different TV shows. Eric Folestad and Adrian Sellewald. Adrian qualified from Bula Dutze School, uh, right. the, the, that school, and uh, of course, uh, Sports Club. Right, so uh, Adrian was actually on uh, X on the Beach. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, They've been trained, and, and I mean, he's a, he's a host, Eric Folestad. And right. what we're doing right now, we're testing out the battle system right away. We're gonna get back to the battle system later. Uh, we're gonna go into detail about that. What we're doing right now is finding out who's actually gonna be part of the main competition. Right. One of these guys is actually gonna be a part of the competition. And they are super nervous because they have not done this before, you know, they've... Just a quick, uh, quick little nuts, and uh, now they, they're on top of a 12 and a half Right. Tower. I mean, they've never competed in the World Championships before, of so this not. is totally out of their comfort zone. And Eric falls dot. Oh my God, he's going for it! Gee, a beautiful. That's that is that is a beautiful. That's, it is. I mean, there's a flailing in the air. There's yeah, you know, but I mean, he's going. <laughs> he, he looks so relieved. Oh, he's happy. I, I mean, hopefully, I talked to him a little bit before. Hopefully, he doesn't move on because because he does not want to do that again. Right. But maybe that one uh, gave him a bit of a shot. I, I don't know. I think it was trying to get into the straight classic that's nice. So these are basically out. two Norwegian celebrities who are competing for a place in the World Championship today. Hands behind the back. He's going for a, a combined shrimp and bullet thing. I, I don't think he stuck the landing too much. But Adrian, a lot of flair in that guy. About the same. <laughs> About the same. I mean, I'm happy I'm not a judge right now because uh, to me those two look pretty much exactly the same in the flailing departments. Maybe it's all down to the landing, in my uh, opinion. Let's watch the slow mo. <laughs> he's he's actually going. For, oh, he didn't tuck all the way at the end there. And remember, this basically is uh, just the end of a, of, a, of a TV show final thing. But the winner... The winner secures their place in the World Championships today. And it is... It's Eric. Look at him. He does not want to go up there. It's and Eric. Again. <laughs> this is part of the battle system, which we, which, which we will come back to. Uh, pretty cutthroat. No points. But first off, let's just go through our main competition first. I mean, we're getting tossed into this. Apologies for all the Norwegian interviews and all of that stuff that you have to suffer through. But we came to the conclusion that, you know, us talking over them is much less of a... Uh, it's worse than letting them talk. So, 24 people are about to do their best. Right. We will be starting off with the, the men. Uh, the men will be, uh, I mean, there's 24 of them. Out of these 24, only eight will advance to the next round. 24 down to eight. You got you to gotta put out your best in this. And it's a freestyle 
first. So, right. I mean, you can really bring everything into it. Freestyle first and then classic during the battle. And, of course, uh, in the... Um, last year's winners are going to be uh, Dutsing last. And here you can see uh, our, you know, quote-unquote favorites. Right. Anything can happen, though. Anything can happen. Dirk Storp uh, made a... Didn't, didn't reach all the way up last year. He's back with a vengeance. On the Shrubs is uh, someone to look out for. And of course, our top four from last year. Arna Hargan moving up to be the big favorite this year. Right. Lost in the finals last year to Emil Leibeck, right. who is not competing, of course. So maybe this is his big chance. Arna hasn't won anything yet. Well, except for you know, different uh, competitions here and there, but right. uh, never won a world champion title. Yeah, and I think that second place last year really hurt. Oh, yeah, it was tight. It was very close. And uh, I think they were both rooting for the other person to win, but at the same time wanting to win. It's 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 kind of weird when they're such good friends, all of them. All right. So let's just go through a little bit about uh, what judges are looking for during the freestyle dots. We can start with the, the power of it all. You need to go out there and, and show that you mean business. Right. Acrobatics okay. is a big deal of the freestyle. You know, it's a, it's a big part of it. So you can basically do, do tricks in the air as long as your landing is either in a, a shrimp, a bullet, or no hands. Well, the no hands is, uh, is, uh, is something of itself. I mean, I, I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of no hands tonight. But, uh, you know, some of the more crazier guys might do it but all right let's just take a time out and and say hi to our youngest competitor here today out first <sighs> got his spot at the last minute Sik Webergan. how old is he he's 10 years old ten he years started old. when he was eight full of oh 720 720 and I spoke to him before uh, before we started here today and he told me he was gonna do a 720 yeah <laughs> but I mean you hear these guys planning yeah with a satellite twist as well at the end good beautiful control landing. on the way down beautiful landing this guy's going places but I mean that's how it starts isn't it I mean that's these young guys he's in the fifth grade fifth grader <laughs> and can I just again state that it's not the normal 10 meter height or the 11 meters that we had last year right but 12 and a half 12 and a half meters there's just enough room for an extra rotation at the end those last two and a half meters that 25 percent extra oh yeah I'm good at math so uh 12 and a half meters for our international viewers is equivalent to 41 feet so they're hitting the water at 34 miles per hour. It takes a little bit under two seconds for them to hit the water. A lot of time to do a lot of stuff up there, as we'll uh, be witnessing throughout the day. But again, once again, big kudos to uh, the youngest competitor here tonight. I can't decide if, I, if it is today or tonight, because the sun is out, it's a beautiful day. But it's still, you know, after, good afternoon? Is that something Good afternoon is good. Well, day and night. It's all the same. Under the midnight sun. And again, we're so lucky to have such wonderful weather today. Everyone has come out to watch. We're so we lucky have to have uh, spectators. As we were talking to different competitors uh, earlier, right. we were all talking about how sort of empty it was because well last year i'm talking about last year where you know we couldn't have any uh, huge crowds or anything so I'm, and i mean this is why they do it they do it to impress people and they get the extra boost they feed off of it you they know feed it. they love it when the crowd crowd goes wild and, that, and that's what they want but here's a fun fact too i mean we're going from the youngest competitor directly to the oldest competitor right up at the top here Oh, he's getting some points as well. <laughs> Sigma with 37 and a half. 
I guess the referees, the judges are kind of uh, putting down a hardcore line. Yeah, so they are uh, judging from one to 10. So but I was is, saying, 45 yeah. years old. 45 years old, right. 45. We have two, two competitors today that are 45. This is one of them. But this is one of the longest competing uh, guys up there. I mean, 11 world championships 11. in a row. I mean, he's made the cut 11 years in a row. And uh, I mean, he's here to prove everything. Oh, a nice tuck and a 360. He looks really happy with that. This is our four, 14th year. <laughs> 14th year at the World Championships. And this man, for Christian Anton, is 45 years old. This is his 11th year. <laughs> Look at that. Tuck. Tuck outstretched. Oh, nice chest there. <laughs> Let's get to see the old boys are still running hot. It certainly is. Quicker with the judges this time. Oh, beautiful. Okay, we're seeing some nine. We're seeing, we're seeing a nine. We're seeing a nine. Seven and a half. I mean, huh. they're still. Uh, I mean, the judges are looking for different things, as we were talking about earlier. Of course, you have the power out. You have the landing, of course, the, the complexity of the, the splash. Trish. Yeah. The splash is also a big part of it. Yeah. But they're also looking for that little extra, that X factor. Right. A little bit of flair, authenticity. Speaking of young contestants, I mean, he's growing up right before our eyes. Leo Landro. 15 years old. Oh! Oh! I can't even. As a front flip to the 360, to. I, 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 We have to see that in slow motion. I remember seeing that guy two years ago, and he's getting that extra. It looks like he just had the time to do that last yeah. rotation there. That is a hard rotation. That is do. a hard rotation. And the judges know this. All of the judges are ex-dutsters themselves. So they know the complexity of each of these jumps. Beautiful form. And that little extra turn at the end. And unlike diving, in a dutzing, you want the splash when you land. Oh, most definitely. And also that little extra touch of getting up before the splash has died down right. is also a, like part of the part of the little factor. Yeah. And the height of the splash also means a more controlled landing. Ooh, nine and a half. We're going high. That was that was quite a complex uh, dutz, though. It was, and I think if that's how we can see these, uh, I mean, I don't want to see lower, lower contestants because it's not built up as such. I mean, these guys at the at the end might have gotten their tickets in different ways, but oh, the Swede looks a little uncontrolled there, but <laughs> well, he, he looks happy. Joel, 21 for Sweden. It felt like he was out of control. But at the same time, it's, it's so strange to watch. It's so strange, and I struggle sometimes to see if they manage to tuck their heads all the way in towards the end. Okay, I'm back heavy there from the drill. Right. So the goal is to hit the water, you know, at the same, you know, you can't hit it feet first. Yeah, he's getting, uh, he's getting a draw for that. Docked on the points. Because to me, I mean, that could have been one of those. Oh, that's good. That's he that's lost good. control, but at the same time, he looks so controlled in his own control. Oh, here we go. He's not happy to be here. <laughs> so this was the winner of the battle that we saw before. Um, He's been trained personally by Arna Haglund, which means that he's got, you know, some decent training. What's he going to do this time? Only done the classic. And he goes for a classic. I mean, it's the exact same as before, but he does it so much better. Yeah, he was flailing in the first jump. Now it really looked like he had some control. Yeah, I mean, of course, he didn't just jump out of a 12 and a half meter tall container no. tower. No, and I think that's important to talk about because yeah. don't try this at home. Please don't. Don't well, find your local cliff and uh, and try this at home. Look because at him. 
these guys have been yeah, practicing yeah. first from one yeah. meters, you know, building up to two, three, four, five, and then eventually to ten. So, so this is we we have to tell the kids that are watching at home. Do not go for yeah. uh, ten meters. Start slow, start low. Right. Get stick to landing, and then uh, go out and, and increase the height as you go along, as you feel more confident. <laughs> he says. Done. He says. I hope we're finished for today. How did how did that when you stood there up and and kicked down? Yeah, it's too high. It's too high. It's too high. It's too high. So that's why we have that was a dump. But now I'm glad that we are done. Me and my line of the body. That's what we have to do when we have a lot of people. Rotting so much. Okay. Absolut och hur den planlade hur du ska hoppa gjorde det var det några tankar eller var det helt spontant? Nej, det blir ju bara en klassisk döds då. Jag kan inte driva och flippa på sån där för det jag är er inte dödsir. Det var det som är er grejt så en klassisk döds det håller för mig alltså. Jag syns det var tuff ja. Tack. <laughs> well, he's done for the day is what he says. I mean, it would be so much fun if he actually scored higher and had to do a second a third jump. But uh his body coursing with adrenaline he's, he's saying and uh when asked what was he thinking when he was up there it's too high is it's common i think he's sharing the same sentiment as a lot of the, the viewers here <laughs> kevin sharvik he uh, had his debut in the world championship 2019. it's not a bad uh uh, you see, that's what I'm talking about. That's that's the no-hander right there. That's gonna pick him up some extra point. Nice rotations. Right, head and feet first is the no-hander. We don't see it quite that often, do we? Well, look at his hands. I mean, all the way behind his back, just hands and feet. And you know, your body must be telling you to do the opposite. You know, most definitely. But maybe we're seeing a change. Like I said before, I mean. We're probably not going to see a whole lot of no-handers, but these guys are going all the way out in their first jump. They are, but you can see he's getting awarded for for doing that. They are, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that because they are going for it I in their first jump interview. because there are only eight eight people they gotta that give advance, it all. They gotta so they have to give it all. Hvor han gik der er du fornøjet? Det får vi se. Jeg vet ikke helt endnu. Jeg skal have et tryk og lande, men. Jeg følte det gikk bra, ass. Det var det gikk kjempebra. Ja, takk. Ja, tusen takk for det. Det var godt å høre. Lykke til. Ja, jo, tusen takk for det. Well, Kevin is happy. Uh, as I was saying, the whole battle system later, you're gonna be able to sort of judge what your competitor is gonna do, or if you're jumping as the second one, you can you can adjust after that. Right. But this round, you just have to give it your all. Finland! Finland is Finland here. is also joining us today. John Salinen. He was here last year, but he uh, didn't manage to advance after the first round. He has a golden ticket from Helsinki. Also a no-hander. Looks like my um, <laughs> like Nostradamus uh, premonitions are uh, biting itself in the buttocks. Yeah, maybe a trend this year. Do you see that splash though? Lots of splash. I'm trying to find out. Yeah, because he didn't actually win in Helsinki. No, he got a golden ticket. Because probably Vittori e Rola could make it or uh, some stuff like that. Yeah, you know, but he, he's Corona has caused a lot of um, a, a lot of things to happen this oh, year. Oh, look at those scores! Oh my gosh, that is probably going to bring him right into the top eight, if you ask me. That's clean nights. Number eight, Alex Nodelan. He did well in Sweden. He usually does a slow jogger. <laughs> Part of the show, you got to give uh, the audience a little uh, teaser to what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> He's certainly happy with that. 
720. Looked like he had a little bit more time towards the end, but he chose to kind of. Ooh. A bit sloppy in the landing, but I mean, that's a, that's a complicated trick he's doing there. Uh, his arms. Landing in a classic shrimp. More of a bullet. Yeah, I think the the judges are gonna deduct some points for the landing and uh, maybe the arm flailing a little bit there, but not a bad score. Let's take a look at number nine, Elias Tiridal. Oh, this was 7:20 with a half a rotation. Didn't didn't make it all the way around. His arms are a bit out of control. I think he's just using it to get some momentum there. <laughs> but still, I mean, any of the, I mean, I feel bad for, for for criticizing what's going on here because what they're doing is just nuts. I was gonna say amazing, but also nuts. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of both. But he's getting some high scores. He definitely is nine and a half. We're closing in on halfway there. Alexander. <laughs> Didn't Happy grab to be here. There. He made top eight last year. Look at that. Ah, that's a nice little tuck. He was telling me that uh, by where he lives, he's that found. Is, uh, can I just yeah. interrupt you real quick and, and, and tell you that that looked. We're going to say this word a lot today. Look at that. Cross legs into a half trailer. Ice cold. Shrimping it. He was telling me uh, by where he lives, he's actually found uh, found a place where he can jump from Look 10 at those meters. scores. That's our interview, man. Nine and a half all the way around. That is. If that's, if, okay, that, if that's how the competition is going to be this year, it's going to be so hard to find our top eight. I mean, the judges are going to have to bring out the, the, the ten. A nice swan. 360. Nice swan. Not too much of a splash. Let's see. This is 720. 720. Half rotation. I'm awesome at math, but I'm not really good at counting rotations, I'm afraid to say. You know, well, it, it, I was going to say, it looked like he had <laughs> eye contact with the judges, so maybe they were... They like that. They, they like that. They like being noticed. Yeah. Our next competitor is a uh, Spanish. Oh. He's from Menorca. He is Last a die-hard fan. He, he, did, di he did 10 years in porn. <laughs> Sorry, did I say 10 years? I hope years. you can do 10 years. 10, 10, 10 days, days in quarantine. quarantine. To be part of this last year. Yeah. Not so hard this year, but he's here and he's happy. Oh, oh beautiful. He was talking about this trick. It was. He says that there are only cliffs in Menorca, no platforms, so right. he, they have to adapt. Uh, he was number 10 last year, and he's a huge, huge star back home. Too far off, uh, Alexander's uh, that's there. Pointing. <laughs> Smiling on the way down, I love that. It's gonna be so hard to, to, to judge this. Such amazing. Ooh, not all the way up. Four solid nines. <laughs> I mean, if this is how it's going to be, I mean, we're halfway through now. It's, it's going to be amazing to watch the rest of it. We'll be right back after these messages. And we're back with number 13, Thor Ivar Helgeson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a general himself, Paul, the 
mastermind. Is that, am I allowed to say that? I think you're allowed to yeah. say that. So happy with the whole, uh, you know, end of Corona. Oh! <laughs> this is certainly something I've never seen before. <laughs> That's, uh, we've been talking about, you know, all the different names and all the different uh, criteria. Uh, well, what what the guys themselves call things differ from trick to trick. I mean, it's the same trick, but they call it different things. And this is, he's doing exactly what he uh, promised us when we were talking to him earlier. Right. Lars, tell him what, what they call this trick. That's, that's the pancake. That's the pancake. <laughs> It's a pancake, or a What's flat it? spin, as, as some other others would say. Yeah. So, uh, Thor Ivar here, he ah. actually sent in the best duds on Instagram, and uh, we can see uh, we can see why the judges uh, like it. Technical uh, difficulty with a, a minus one from one of the judges. Hopefully, that's going to be uh, fixed later. We'll uh, we'll uh, bring you back to speed and uh, see the score he got. <laughs> Is he going to be jumping with the hands? Well, we've certainly seen that before. Mikkel. All the way back. As the general himself pointed out, oh, nice backflip. Is that no hands? Did he land in a bullet? Oh, look, it, his hat's <laughs> still hat's on. still on. Well, And right at the last save. That's a late tuck at the end there. He's going to get some major points for that. It was no hands. Just flying through the air. This this jump looks effortless. This dutz looks effortless. Can I, can I use the word beautiful again? Yes. Okay. I'm trying to save the uh, beautiful for, for the things that are... Well, it's an increasing curve, the whole beautiful thing. But that so is definitely deserving of the title. Tore Vog is jumping. I was speaking earlier, and he said that Dutz is such a big part of his life. He actually cuts holes in the ice during the winter to Dutz to practice for this one jump that we'll be seeing here. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll be seeing more of him today. But uh, let's see what he has to offer. Well, it's all or nothing now, Tore. Oh, those quick, quick road, quick uh, turnarounds there. Yeah, quick rotations into the flats in the in between. What's that? Oh. I, I don't think I've seen that before. Like the. Yeah, mostly we see you know them turning really really quickly. Yeah. But he it looks like he looks like he jumped from 20 meters. You know he had so much time. Lead back, turning back. Big splash towards that. Another thing that the uh, judges are, um, you know, looking for is that last minute eye contact with the water. I mean, right. How? And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna. Yep. He's getting, uh, <laughs> he's getting some big points for that. <sighs> We're over halfway, and I mean. Like we said, only uh, eight of them yeah, will move on to the... Right, and someone hoping to move on is this guy we're seeing here, Anish Rooks. He was number 10 last year. What's a, a tuck and a, is that a 720? Let's do the math. But we're not quite sure if that was a 1080 or a 780. <laughs> no, that is a 1080. It is a 1080. That's a 1080. And look at that. I mean, like I was talking about before, the eye contact with the water. Right. And, I mean, there's literally, like, a tenth of a second before he uh, actually sees the water. I mean, that is beautifully timed. Fourth place. And Anish Rux is one of our... Dutch celebrities here in Norway he has his own YouTube channel. He's uh, he's busy with Dutch all year, isn't he? Well, he did one of the Challenge League uh, Dutch offs, is what I want to call it, and yep. just got his golden ticket. Left it at that. Didn't feel the need to travel around and 
impress everybody. He's been saving it up for the world championship. Oh! We're seeing here number 17, Martin Strump. Oh my god. Oh, no, Unfortunately no, no, no. for that landing. Oh, he was ex he had explosive speed coming out of the dive tower. Yeah, making it possibly a little bit too complicated. Like a double <sighs> double front flip and overshoots oh. it. Overshoots. It's so hard to stop the rotation <laughs> when you're in. It is. You know, it takes a little bit under two seconds. The whole thing. The and whole I mean, thing. And all of those elements needs to be packed into. <sighs> it's a shame. It's a shame. And here we have Raven Kampfjör. He is a professional diver from Norway, seven-time Norwegian championship champion. He's always a favorite. 18 years old. This is his sixth Dutch World Championship. The main issue is he's been... Ooh. Nailed it. Just a single backflip with a... With a flex in the middle there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to put those arms behind his uh, head to... Oh, that's okay. good eye contact <laughs> with the judges there. They appreciate that. I mean, the main thing about um, is in his last years as a competitor, he's been um, not all the way up there. I'm, I'm sorry. Not all the way up. 12th place. He's not going to be happy with that. But one of the main issues is he's been too clean. He's been too much of a diver. Right. And I mean, beautiful. Right. But lately, I mean, you, you've been seeing some elements of, of the, of the gung-ho quality in him as well. Yeah. And a lot of divers, you know, struggle to go from diving to death. Well, one that's not having any problems with diving is Trude Storp. Oh, beautiful. That is a late close. Trulls is a world champion from 2016 and 2017. Been lacking in the, the last years. So. Yeah, he didn't make the semifinals last year. So his trademark is basically yeah. chilling out in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Relaxing. Making it look like we're watching him in slow motion. Well, we're, we're actually Which we are right now. <laughs> <laughs> Even slower motion. Even slower. He's also a Norwegian uh, Dutch star as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Interview. I mean, he looks happy. Six, that's gonna be Sixth hard. Place. Let's see if that holds up. Oh, yeah. We have some rough competition coming up, including the guy who beat him out of the... Okay, okay, okay. Can we have a little time out here, ladies and gentlemen? Simon Matisse is gonna do something that you should not attempt at any point in your life. Do not try this at home. It has never been seen before. He's, I don't know if you can notice that he's not in his uh, regular attire. He's wearing a suit of some sort. He's 45 years old. And he's been on the Dutch. Oh my god, fire. look at that. He's on fire. Seaman is on fire. <laughs> he's on fire. I cannot. That is just ridiculous. Imagine the adrenaline going through his head right now. And he and he managed an amazing Dutz. It's an amazing Dutz as well. This is madness, Lars. What are we watching? With a half rotation, and luckily the fires go out as he hits the water. Look at the look on Seaman's face. But I mean, here's the, here's my problem though. I mean, how is he gonna top this if he, if he moves yeah, on? Yeah, right. on the line. Right? Yeah. What's he gonna do in the classes? Yeah, yeah, in the classic yeah. section after this. He's gonna be frozen in ice before he's... And again, do not try this at home. Please do not. We've never seen this before. The, this certainly came as a surprise. Oh. I'm excited to see what the judge... You know, they have to reward him for yeah, uh, innovation yes. here. Well, if this is if this is where we put the bar, I mean, I think, I, hopefully, this is a one-off. I mean, massive respect and, and to Seaman, but... 
I hope everyone doesn't start lighting themselves on fire before they jump next year. Uh, I mean, I know he's crazy, and that, I don't mean that in a derogatory sense at all, but... Let's have a chat with him. Da skal vi straks uh, få snakke med... Oi, han er på vei opp. <laughs> Flammemannen, jeg vet ikke om jeg skal kalle han det. Han uh, tente på sig selv uh, før han hoppet ned. Er du, er du fornøyd med å hoppe? Ja, ja. <laughs> det er ikke så lett å se noe med gelé og sånn det høyere. Jeg er kjempe for det. Hvordan kom du på ideen om å tente på deg selv før du hoppet? Altså, hvordan kom... Nei, jeg har... Jeg pratet litt om å bli stuntmann, og så snakket jeg med Internasjonal Stuntakademi, ISA. Og så drodde jeg vel litt, og så tenkte vi, fuck it, vi, tar det. vi gjør det i VM. Det var dødskult, og du er videre hørt deg på øret nå. Du kom på tiende plass, så da er du i hvert fall videre, får vi hoppe. Ja, og så langt i hvert fall. Masse lykke til! Ah, Simon, 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 what are you gonna do? I mean, if that doesn't put you in the top eight, I don't know what will, but I guess the judges are still looking for uh, I think they're still the shaking action. their heads, wondering yeah. what just happened. <laughs> and going for a, for a different uh, flair with a hat. Christopher Tamburg. Christopher Tamburg. He was 24th last year. He has a signature where he usually does a 720 with his hands on his chest. He started just three years ago. It looks awesome. It looks awesome. A little chest yeah, bump. Yeah, he, he did that this year as well. Oh, he's been around all year. Well, maybe not all year, but in, in all the different competitions. And placing... Uh, 15th. Oh, he's not going to be well. happy with that. Oh. Yeah, there's going to be a change here. I'm getting uh, a message on my ear. That's not a six, but an eight. So that's going to be changed. Here we have Kim Andre Knudsen, oh, winner in 2019. He lost to Emmett last year in the semis. Placed fourth. He has a problem with his eardrum as I think he actually, I think he, not to correct you, I think Philip Julius knocked him out, if I'm not too mistaken. I mean, it's it's hard at the top. Philip Julius, one of those other world champions, of course. Oh! oh I was worried there for a second. Yeah, it too. almost looked like he weren't gonna, was gonna get around. It's all controlled. That was so controlled. He was busy all the way down doing something. But you were saying about his ear. Yeah, he, he uh, injured his eardrum during a jump two weeks ago. During a dust two Let's weeks get ago. Get time to be. Uh, so he's uh, he hasn't been able to maybe practice as much as he'd like. That hurts as well. That does hurt. And I mean, water in your ear when your eardrum is not up to speed. Okay, okay. Kim Andre is okay. such a nice guy. We're happy he made it to yeah, second yeah, place. Yeah. yeah, always great he's to talk to. He's part of the. Next round. But I was talking about Philip Julius, Steve Orr, and here he is. He's won three times in a row, hasn't he? Had a winning streak from 2013 to 2015. It's time to bring it back. It's time to bring it back. He's also a, a former professional diver. He's always right at the top, but hasn't been able to get that world champion title since 2015. Expecting big things from Philip Julius. Oh, what's... That's a nice little uh, point. Eye contact. I don't even know where the judges are. I'm just open. <laughs> so relaxed. So relaxed. <laughs> just a clean 360. The judges are actually in a boat right under them. That's true. I uh, I remember them see. saying that if if they get splashed, they're they're not going to get deducted. If anything, they're going to get a little bit more points. Oh, yeah. Judges love that. Philip Julius. He's dutting in a cut-off uh, jean shorts, which is a normal attire for the dutzers, uh, at least in the 60s. The classic, they were, yeah. They were wearing that. 
And at the top of the tower here, we have Arne Haugland, number two last year, Lars. Yep. One of the big favorites this year. Always ready to get the party going. Getting the crowd, part of it. And another thing, he, he, there's never enough room for Arna. He no. always needs more room. He always room. needs more room. Oh, super, oh, oh, and a nice extra, making it a 720. I thought it was going to do a clean 360 there. Yeah, but me too. He just snuck that in. Full of surprises. And then quick rotation at the end. Imagine imagine just thinking, oh, I have time for one more while you're mid-air there. I think that was planned from uh, from the start. I don't know. He looked pretty surprised at his uh, <laughs> achievement when he popped up from the water there. And then... Definitely, definitely uh, part of the top eight, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah. Squeezes in there. Squeezes in at, at number five. Part of the top eight. So, oh, let's sum it up. Let's sum it up. 24 men Look have Look at all those people with 44. <laughs> it is a tight race. It is a tight race. So the top eight will go on to battle in the next round, Lars. With a classic. With a classic, Duds. It's going to be exciting to see. Let's do a quick commercial break. See you later. <sighs> Hello, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to the battle portion of the World Duds Championship. I'm exhausted already. I am. Am uh, I allowed to be? I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, well, I am excited and exhausted. It is a, a little bit exhausting to watch because I'm, I'm kind of sitting here and, you know, my knuckles are white and yeah. I'm, I'm so lost, nervous for them. But we lost some favorites. We did. We certainly did lose some favorites. some favorites. At the battle here. Oh. So uh, the way this competition works is that uh, two and two will uh, go out in a battle. And uh, four, four people will make it to the semifinals. And then another battle. And another battle to the finals. And then only one is left. Only one is left. Should we mention, though, uh, Arna Hauglan was one of the uh, inventors of this whole battle system. Uh, they tried it out last year. We did it last year. Right. Um, so I'm happy to see him up there. But now, we're just diving right into it. Or should uh, I say, dutzing it right into it? We're dutzing right into it. And the way this is, uh, this will be is that it, the, f the one who has the most points, uh, who is in first place as of now, will be battling with number eight. Exactly. Uh, and uh, all points are gone. This will purely be a battle between these two guys. Pure knockout. Finland first, John Salinen. A little bit of running man there. A little bit of a running man. The jogger. Explosive power out of the dive tower is something that the judges really look at. And the no hands at the end. But I know, I mean, I'm not too <laughs> familiar with uh, John. But I know that Kim Andre <laughs> has a bunch of tricks up his sleeve. And it should, should definitely be mentioned that this is the classic portion. That's why you're not seeing any spins or rotations or anything. This is just the classic in which all of those things are off the table. You, got, you have to do is make it as clean as possible. Right. Close as late as possible. Stick to landing. Should be pleasing for the so eye. Odd with a point. The point towards the judges that never fails to impress, does it? <laughs> he caught a fish. <laughs> As you do here in Norway, you uh, dive out and you and you catch a fish. That's how we do it. Extra points for fish. Extra points for fish. If that doesn't if that doesn't win him this battle, I don't know what will. Yeah, he's going for the fish. He saw it. He's but that's doing incredible. the hawk. He, he, he's not holding a fish, right? He he really <laughs> caught the fish. I'm calling the bluff. I want to see that one more time. <laughs> he's like a hawk. <laughs> Go for the shrimp. Comes out of the water with a fish. I don't think we've ever seen this. This is another thing we've never seen in world championships before. First someone lights themselves on fire, now someone comes up with a, a fish in their mouth.
<laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm just sitting there laughing because that is only so Norway, ridiculous. guys. All right. Yes, they're not fish. Let's see. Let's see if that charm. The judges. Side by side comparison. <laughs> looks pretty. Yeah, we move on. Let's have a look at the other one. They both look a nice effortly. <laughs> Leslie controlled. A no in the hands air. versus a, a shrimp. Right. Is that gonna? Both have a big splash. All oh. right. Oh. Right. Which Kim means, Andrea ladies and gentlemen, Knudsen. Kim Andre is <laughs> in the quarters. No. He must be so happy about this. <laughs> okay. Our next battle contestants, Arne Haugland against Tore Våge. So cutthroat to be standing up here, you know. And the, the guys are such good friends. But the amazing thing to me is, like, like I said, we lost a lot of the uh, favorites in the cutoff here. And I'm happy to see uh, Tude Boga up there. A bit of an unwritten uh, uh, joker in this. Pointing to the judges. That's cool. oh, that is a flight Beautiful. and a half. That is a flight in the half. Such power out from the board up there. I agree. It looked like time was standing still when he was pointing there. <laughs> and the judges are pointing back. That's our finish, friend Sami. It <laughs> did a nice military style uh, landing Whoa. earlier. And Arne is also known for, for, you know, running all the way back to the tower to get enough speed. Yeah, and, and it shows because, I mean, I don't think anybody gets that far out from the tower. Look at the way he looks at the judges on the way down. So much respect. So much respect. Okay, Twitter, let's see what you got. Okay, he must have heard the crowd going crazy after Arne, so... Uh, he needs to do something spectacular. Oh, that's a late close. That's a very late close, but maybe he gets some extra points for insane airtime then. Well, competing with Arna, that's... Oh, I got a quick little nod. A little bit of a nod to the judges. <laughs> I've actually not seen that before. <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> a little bit of a feet flip, but it actually looked like that was uh, intentional. Yeah, he's Look at still that. running. Looking. How you doing? Emily? What? He's not yeah. playing. Like, he's so in control. Look at that. I love seeing these playbacks, you know, in the yeah, slow yeah. motion because you really you get a chance to yeah, look yeah. them in the eye. I mean, the classic portion sounds less exciting on paper, but I mean, <laughs> when you're looking at this right here, right. And this is how it's supposed to be done. Right. Beautiful. So it's not as acrobatic as the freestyle, obviously. This is more of a, a straightforward classic, hence the name, uh, Dutz. It's all about owning the air. Yeah, how did it go? You said you had a little wound here. It was a punk smell. A little bit of a punk smell. A little bit. And now we'll see the results here. Da kommer de... Åh, close call for Arne Haugland. Moves on. Last year, I mean, the only discrepancies between the, the referees were, like, one of them had the other. Right. It's four to one. But here's a three to two. Right. Oh, this one. Next up. Anders Rox. That's Rox. And Alexander Frosta. A lot of speed out. Not too innovative. No, no, but I mean, still clean he's... Clean classic. Clean this classic. guy's been in the game for so long. <clears throat> Such an influence. So he can just own it. No, he doesn't need to do too much. Huge splash. Yeah. Look at the power coming out of the tower. No eye contact there. Maybe he's thinking that the judges have gotten enough attention. Yeah. Maybe he's thinking about hitting the water. I, I would be. But I am excited to see what Alexander can do. 
Yep, yeah, they go right out. It was debut it last it year. Yeah, okay. This guy is going places. Oh, oh, so so clean, so controlled. <laughs> Even keeps his hat on. <laughs> you think that gives that extra points? Well, it really looks Just cool. that ownage. Ownage. Yeah, he placed eight last year. So he's already doing better. Just remaining that eye contact all the way down. And then at the last second, well, not even a second, tenths of a second, looking down and see where it's all at. Yeah, There's the you know, water. Not just are these guys competing for creds, but speaking a little bit about the prizes. I mean, they get they get some money, they get a car from Citroën, one of the sponsors. Yeah. There is a lot on the line, but yeah, like you said, pretty mostly nice to get a car for, for the for cred. Too. Mostly Most for definitely the mostly for the cred. Speaking of our uh, sponsors here today, Suneva Finn, Citroën, Bula, Dutz Energy, and 7-Eleven. Yeah, they're all here, making this what it is. Oh, just a clean white across, across the, board. the board. Honors, unfortunately, Woo! is out of the competition. Alexander, with so much to prove. Moves on. He's the guy to look out for. Like you said, debuted last year. Right. He's only going up. But this, I am so happy to see Juan uh, up there. This is going to be a tough one. These are such great guys, both of them. Juan from Menorca never fails to show up. You know, he's such yeah, yeah, yeah. such a good sport. He loves dutzing. Dedicated. And uh, Philip nice. Julius, reigning world champion. Well, not, not reigning. Not, not reigning, but from uh, yeah, 2013, year world. 2015. Three year world champion. But first off, let's take a look at Juan. A lot of speed, doing the same, same trick as it did in the qualifiers. Hoping to score some points off of that. It is beautifully done. It is though. beautiful. There we said it again. Beautiful. If anybody's keeping tabs on um, on YouTube, watching this. How many times have we said beautiful so far? <laughs> Keep an open tab on that one. Yeah. We're not done. Philip Julius. <sighs> Saw what Juan did. Again, wearing these classic cut-off jean denim shorts, which is part of uh, part of the classic uh, the Dutch, yeah. isn't it? That's what they did when they jumped the fence at Frongerparken. Right, to impress their friends and the ladies. And the ladies. That's how it all started. Philip Julius never fails to impress. Ah, oh, such slow so job relaxed. coming out. So it looks so easy. Effortless. Not too, not too. Uh, I mean, he yeah. leaned back. Yeah. Yeah. No, he doesn't but he lean stretches back, out right, right at the end and then tucks it back in. Right. right at the end. Again, they have under two, a little bit under two seconds to hit the water. Only just manages to put his hands behind his head there for a for a chest fluff. Huge splash here. Quite honestly, I'm so caught up in all the acrobatics and all the great stuff that's going on. I, I keep forgetting to look at the splash height, but that's for the referees to uh, look at. Look at Juan. Two different styles here. That's. Juan's signature move is uh, talking about. All white. All white. All white. And Philip Julius advances. On to the semis. Competition is getting so tough today. I can it, is, it is insane. Hardly wait. But let's take a break from the boys. Well, after we take a look at after we take a look at this of course this scoreboard so we have four men left it's gonna be i mean i'm getting a little misty-eyed knowing that 
three of these guys are gonna not win, but then again. I mean, on a second, third place, it, 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 I mean, there's a lot of creds for that too, Lars. <laughs> but we're gonna move on to the ladies. And I'm sorry to say that the top three from last year are all out with injuries this year. Right, not all of them pertaining to Dutzing. Of course, no, but uh, a bit of, you know, training and uh, things can go wrong. I'm just sad to see that, you know, especially Ingrid can't be here to right. defend her uh, her uh, goal from last year. Right. But of course, we also have uh, Lena. She's out. She's out. We have, but we have four very strong competitors this year. Uh, 14, 15, 18, and 22 years old. Always hoping for more women to uh, to join this sport. And there are more. I mean, that's why I brought it up because normally we would have like seven to eight uh, ladies out right. here. But uh, it's going to be exciting to see uh, what the girls can bring. And I mean, the girls have really been stepping it up. Right. Lately. And they they start actually with the battle format, don't they? Yep. Straight into. Not as much finals, but the semifinals right away. And Lars, tell the viewers, do they start with a classic or a freestyle death? <laughs> In order for them to do both, we need to see the classic deaths first. Right. So unlike the men who started with the freestyle, the women will be starting with a classic deaths. And a classic deaths is judged on exit speed out of the dive tower, height and power in the jump, style in the air again it should be controlling and pleasing for the eye and the originality of the jumping style i mean keeping giving the illusion of being in the air for as long as possible like time stands still mina versus olivia mina was here uh, last year she got knocked out by uh, ingrid who, of course, won the whole thing. Has a lot to prove this year. Right. And uh, Olivia, sir, uh, first time competing in the World Championship. You know, the first time she does from two, 10 meters was two weeks ago, Lars? <laughs> These are some gutsy girls. These are some gutsy ladies. And Olivia, I gotta, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to mention, she's 15. She's supposed to have her uh, confirmation uh, this weekend, but she postponed it. Her entire family is here. But first off, Mina, a nice. She has gotten so much better. I mean, the difference a year makes. Look at this. The tummy wipe. A little bit, a little bit of flailing arms, flailing legs. I think that's part of it. Yeah, I think she's doing that on. Uh, oh, see that wipe across the stomach. Well, she has great speed coming out of the tower. Lands in a little bit of a. I don't know. I mean, she she lands in a shrimp. Uh, it looks like she hurt herself a little bit, unfortunately. Once again, the reason. <laughs> Not to do this Olivia straight away. Agneta standing at the top, 15 years old, first time in a world championship. Did she get recruited from uh, one of our sponsors? Uh, she Cinefin did. She did. They had a camp earlier in the summer, and uh, she was the recruit that was. She must be feeling the nerves up there. Oh my gosh. Running. Oh, oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Running man out. Yeah. Out in a fully outstretched. Fully outstretched before hitting the water like a shrimp. Beautiful control. Beautiful uh, splash at the end. It's really going for the jogger as well. She almost over rotated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But manages to pull back a little bit. Chest up. Yeah, 
We're not supposed to have favorites. We're not supposed to have favorites, and we don't, do we? We don't. We don't. It's just it, the enthusiasm kind of takes over. Side by side here. A more controlled version from Mina. But you never know what the judges are going to say. Yeah, but the landing sort of... The landing kind of gives it, it away. Let's, just, uh, let's, let's see if we're right or not, Lars. Yeah. Like I said, we have no idea what's going through the judges' minds. Olivia in white, Mia in black. Oh! Ooh! Olivia, Olivia advances. Might have been that landing. <laughs> it's always fun to see how, I mean, we're all sort of confused along with them. But you are right, Olivia. Olivia. You're in the finals now. She looks super happy with that. The Asperic. final two women. Okay, great. Asbjerg and Bohr. Asbjerg started uh, dancing one year ago. Had her debut. But she's part of the... Asbjerg is part of the 20-plus club. She is. So I asked I mean, her a little bit about what she was planning to do today, and she didn't want to give anything away. So I don't know if that's because she doesn't know or because uh, she's keeping it a secret. Yeah, they always keep saying that they don't know what they're going to do until they're on the top of the tower. A bit of a show. <laughs> she says she's better at freestyle, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this goes. Well, if she, uh, well, if she moves on to the final, we can see what she has up her sleeve. Lots of speed. Oh, eye contact. Good eye contact with the, with the judges. <laughs> Looks the like judges they like are them. happy. Yeah, so she's part of the 20 plus club, uh, Lars. That yeah. means uh, dancing from 20 meters or 20 above. meters, if you can believe it. So this is, uh, you know, nothing to her. 12 and a half. No. Look at that. That is so much power out of the tower. <laughs> Doesn't even look at the water until she's right there. Beautiful. Oh my god, I think this is tuning out to be turning out to be one of the favorites right now. And now we have uh, contestant four. number four. First time she dust uh, from ten meters was on Tuesday. She said she's gonna give it her all today. A tuck. A tuck and a grab. A grab tuck, Lars. Tucky grab. Tucky grab. Doesn't really get to bend back all the way. Might seem like her landing uh, hurt a little bit. A little bit no, off. No, no, no. Well, nope. a little back heavy, but still. I always wonder if they don't tuck in their heads, you know? It, it just looks so painful. That is when injuries happen. Oh, but she no, does. But she has a beautiful she uh, tuck. A chin tuck, not the chin other tuck. tuck. <laughs> I love the hat. Just. What, what's up with everyone wearing, wearing their hat? Why? Because <laughs> it's entertainment for the viewers. Again, they're diving, sorry, dutzing from 12 and a half meters. It's no joke. It's a long way down. Camaraderie between the girls. It's an all black. Judges are unanimous. Asbjerg is on. Da da har vi begge finalistene her. Altså, hva, hvordan er følelsen å vite at du allerede har kommet i finalen? Det er helt sykt. Jeg er bare glad. Og du skulle egentlig ha konfirmasjon i dag? Ja. Hva skjedde, hva skjedde der? Jeg overtalte mamma og pappa, så jeg fikk være mye VM i stedet. Ja, det er gøy. Gratulerer. Og hvordan føles det for deg å komme videre til finalen? Det er selvfølgelig veldig gøy. Det er jo... Ja, nå er det litt nærmere da. Nå er det jo ansett topp to, så det kunne jo ikke vært noe bedre enn det, egentlig. Har du noe taktikk videre? Jeg gunner på å ha det gøy og egentlig bare 
prova eja lufta lite liksom. Ja. Ja, det så ser jag jättebra. Lycka till vidare bägge två. Tusen tack. Well, she was talking about how uh, she had to postpone her uh, confirmation and the girls are just uh, excited to be. When we come back, the guys will battle it out. <sighs> I can't wait. Welcome back. Welcome back. <sighs> We're down to uh, the last four. Right. And they will now be jumping freestyle, won't they? Yeah. It's... Um, Heartbreaking and heart raising at the same time. It is. It's important to remember that in freestyle, the main elements of a classic dutz must be present. Yeah. But uh, they have so much more room to, you know, be innovative. To. Uh, Other than that, I mean, do whatever. You, I mean, to do whatever they want, basically. We just witnessed a guy light himself on fire. We did. So, I mean, it's it's pretty much open right now. I don't think any of these guys are gonna <laughs> do anything close to what Seaman was doing before. But my big thing here is Alexander Frostan. Right. He uh, hasn't been part of the top before. He hasn't. He debuted last year, yeah. didn't he, so in I mean, the World I, Championship. But I he mean, says that he lives and breathes Dutzing. Yeah, and it shows because, I mean, uh, scored high in the first portion of it, the freestyle portion. And okay. now he's just part of the top four. He is. And what he was telling me earlier, which I tried to, to, to say, was that uh, in the woods where he lives, he has made a, uh, a kind of a podium from 13 meters uh, where he practices. That's just for his own. I mean, that's that's some dedication right there. That definitely is a dedication, but you know, it's gotten him this far. It's gotten him to the final four. Yeah, 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 definitely. But first off, Let's see if Kim Andre catches another fish. <laughs> There's plenty more fish in the sea. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm uh, sorry. Bad joke. What will happen now? One-time world champion versus a three-time world champion. Kim Andre versus Philip Julius. And they're such good friends, these two guys. These two guys, are, as are most of the guys that are jumping. You know, it's really a tight knit dutzing community. Yeah. They travel together. They dutz together. You can really they see the together. camaraderie. They hug together. <laughs> it's beautiful. But I am excited to see what uh, Kim Andrea and his bad ear can do this time around. I think there's so much adrenaline pumping through his body right now. He's definitely not thinking about his ear. Of course, the winner of this goes to the final. The loser goes to the bronze final. Just to make that obviously clear. Freestyle here. Come on, Kim Andre. Show us what you got. That's what he was talking about. That's his. Uh, that is his uh, thing. 720 with a. A little kick to the side, which is not easy to do. It's not easy to rotate like that in the air towards the end. And with half a horizontal rotation as well. Almost jumping backwards out of it. Keeping his eye on the water. Beautiful landing. So that's what you're up against, Philip Julius. You got to pull something out of your hat. For this. Do you think he changes uh, his denim shorts? After each jump? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Side note. I think these guys are so superstitious, I'm sure. I'm sure he's wearing the same ones. Yeah. We'll have to ask him later. Almost, yeah, that's... Wasn't that very identical to Kim Andres? Except for the foot. This is going to be a close call. I, I am I am so happy we're not judging this. And I'm sure most of the viewers are too. Looked like he almost hit the water a little bit sideways. No. Just the tiniest margins can pull some points off and also cause injury. 
Again, we want to tell our viewers, don't try this at home <laughs> from uh, 12 and a half meters. This is going to be a close call. Philip Julius with the white. Thank you, Andre. You see that? We're just quiet right now because we're anticipating. We're so excited. Kim Andre moves Kim Andre on. moves on. Philip Julius once again knocked off the top. Still has one jump to go though for that bronze. Third place. And we're going to find out who he's going to be battling for that. But more excitingly, I mean, uh, who's going to be in the final? Right. <laughs> Who's going to be in the final? I mean, uh, Arna and Alexander. Arna and Alexander. Arna, number two last year. He's really looking yeah, to, win to claim this it thing. this year. Yeah. With his uh, biggest competition out with an injury, it's his time to step up. He's a crowd favorite and a people pleaser, so I can't wait to see what, what kind of tricks he pulls now. Still hasn't won, and I mean, he is such a big element of this whole sport. He is. Right now. And then you have the up-and-comer, Alexander Frostad. This is a battle at its finest. That's a 1080 right there. That was explosive. too quiet right now excuse us because I'm, I'm just in awe right now that is a perfectly executed you know the level of these dutzes are just getting higher and higher every year tries to sneak out and get the chest out at the end such good technique not really any time for it and you can tell he has confidence to pull it up. <laughs> well he's happy with it he did exactly what he was gonna do but Alexander Frostad. It's his time to shine. Lots of speed. Oh, oh no, 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 unfortunately, no. he doesn't make the landing. And Arno Hagdan knows. He knows he's. He knows. Uh, I mean, where did it all go wrong? Oh. It's at that last oh. rotation. That is really unfortunate for Alexander Frostad. It looks good all the way up until there, in which he knows that the uh, water is closing in. No, and I mean, yeah, his whole body got a little tilted, unfortunately. It did. Alexander versus Philip in the bronze oh. final later. <laughs> but there's no time to rest for the wicked. Well, we haven't even officially got to know who actually, who, who never, uh, we don't know yet. But it, yeah. <laughs> Like we thought, Arna is. Uh, Let's hear from the guys. Arna, det var i kæmpe bra og Kim også. Hvad, altså hvad, hvad føles det at være i finalen med Kim? Nej, for det er ikke det drømme finalen. Kun jeg valgte mig at gå i finalen mod, så er det Kim. Og Kim er enig eller er det lidt? Det er jo lidt skummelt at gå mod en, som er så flink og eller hvad er tankene om konkurrencenivå her? <laughs> Vagt ugen ene. <laughs> jeg vinder bare grine. Hey. Og, altså, hva er taktikken når dere skal stå der oppe nå etterpå? Er det bare, har, har dere noen planer, eller tar dere det som de kommer? Nei, ja, så tar det som de kommer. Altså, drømmefinale, det er ikke greit. Jeg går mot en kjempegod kompis. Vi er i lag i Ado Arena, titter ofte. Det, det er han som lærer meg, det er han som pusher meg. Ja, det er fantastisk. 
Ja, det ser nog gøy. Ja, det är er jättegøy att se och masse lycka till efterpå. Ja, det kunde bli bättre. Det är er fantastiskt. Det är er er två väldigt nöjda finalister i alla fall. Det är er säkert bäst. Ja, så spelar ingen roll hur det går nu. Det är självklart gøy att vinna men jag ska till helvete. Det är er något som får tjäna vinna, er något som lägger ner. Det ska till Sara Kim. Den desidert mest dedikerte og beste dødseren vi har. Bare står i finalen mot han som også er en av mine beste kompiser. Det er helt fantastisk. Og det er fine ord da. Ønsker dere masse, masse lykke til. Takk. Tenker deg. Så der har vi det. Det finale. Kim og Drake Nuts. Åh, så fint sant. And as they described it themselves, it's a dream final. Right. They said they're best friends. And I couldn't have picked a better competitor for the main prize. The car, the money, the fame, the fortune. The fortune and, and money is pretty much the same, isn't it? Pretty much. <laughs> oh, but that is for later. Right Going now. Going over to the women. Olivia against Aspirik. Moment of truth for the women in the 2021 Dutch World Championship. Here in Oslo, Norway, you can see the sun is still out. It's going to be out for a long time. The sun is always shining in Norway. It is. But first, over to the uh, bronze final. Yep, we got to have the bronze. Yeah, Mina against War. Mina with some experience from this whole circus. Number four last year, hoping for number three now. Beautiful 360. (laughs) Oh, she's happy with that. Super clean. That is almost perfectly uh, executed in my eyes. It's going to be hard to beat. Board. In the water. So, for all the women out there watching, step it up. It's time. It's time. I'm not sure these girls will agree with, but we need some more competition. Oh, front oh. flip! Oh no! Oh. Going all the way out. Huge like you mentioned speed before. Out of the tower. I mean, the front flip is the hardest to stop rotating, and this is a good example of right. things not going exactly to plan. Front ah. flip is so hard because you need to have eye contact with the water all the time, and it's like you said, it's hard to stop and not over rotate. And there she sees it in the moment of truth. Oh, bit of a back landing. Hope she's all right. That could possibly hurt a little bit. She looks fine though, luckily. Once again, I'm, uh, I'm not assuming anything. <laughs> side by side here. <laughs> oh, yeah, she looks like she's hurting a little bit. <laughs> she's fine. <laughs> yeah, all black. Mina gets her bronze. <laughs> Mina gets a bronze this year, fourth place last year. Moving up in the world. Moving up. Can't wait to see her next year. <laughs> and here we have Olivia versus Ospierg for first and second place. I mean, Ospierg has the... Uh, longevity and uh, she's she's been a part of this Olivia with her 15 years of age she wow that this too much in her but previous dots oh no oh. no 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 it's the rain I think it's the rain he's going for the 360 with a uh, back oh. it's the water hard oh yeah feet first I just hope that her uh, 
face didn't get to smash there. Looks like she's, she is hitting. I mean, the guts these women have. 12 and a half meters. Two seconds of free fall. Well, worst case scenario. Du kommer smilende up. She gets a silver medal in the world championship. Say about that. I don't know. I'm not going to call it. I'm not going to call the winner. But you know, she only started one year ago. She didn't advance to the sem semis last year. Which is the only, only girl that's done a 1440. That is insane, though. And as mentioned before, the 20 club. Yeah, yeah, as yeah. We're calling it. That's worth mentioning. Again. Hashtag 20 club. 20 club. Du kommer opp smilende, ser jeg. Well, the speaker is already congratulating people. Ja, det er litt faktisk. Ja, på krise først. I don't know what to say. We still have to wait for the official results, of course. Du kommer... Ja. Unfortunate with the landing there. Unfortunate for Olivia. Du kommer opp smilende. Er du fornøyd med å hoppe... Ja, jeg fikk det der på meg i hvert fall. Så jeg fikk ikke sett Olivia sitt hopp så godt fra toppen, men ja, for å hoppe det hele da. Ja, og nå venter vi jo spent da på å få resultatene her om ikke så alt for lenge. Olivia, hvordan gikk det? Nei, det gikk jo hele andre på føtteren da, men jeg er egentlig fornøyd med innsatsen min. Da skal vi få se resultatene her nå. Hvert øyeblikk. Olivia's jump, so she has no idea how it's gonna happen. Gratulerer! No huge surprise for the people who actually saw the jump. Osbjørg Nersa. World champion 2021. World champion 2021. Jeg vet ikke hva jeg skal si. Ja, det er sykt veldig. Endelig, endelig. Er det etterlengta? Det er veldig etterlengta. Det gikk litt dårlig i fjor, så shit, det er etterlengta. Det er litt vanskelig å ta det inn, det skal jeg være helt ærlig, men det er deilig. Åh, det skjønner jeg. Har du øvd mye nå i sommer, eller hva? Det har blitt en del hopp, det har det. Absolutt. Så det er gøy at jeg får det til når det gjelder også. Hadde du trodd det her i dag når du kom hit? Altså, jeg hadde jo et håp da. Det var målet. Det var det. Ja, jeg må innrømme at det var målet det, men man er jo aldri sikker før man står her, og nå står jeg her, så så sykt. Gratulerer, du er altså da regjerende verdensmester i dødsing. Ja, det er det. Det er helt vanvittig. Gratulerer igjen. Tusen takk. Just a quick translation. I mean, she's been wanting this for so long. She said it's been a long time coming. Yeah, and we got the answer to what we were asking ourselves she has trained a lot during the summer she couldn't believe it off. she and said it's too she, much to take in right now and she got the jump that she wanted to do she executed it perfectly a very very worthy world champion in Osbjørn Osbjørn <laughs> we'll be ah, back after a short break and then it's the boys then it's the it's boys again it's time to find out who the world champion is it's going to be. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to uh, beautiful Oslo, Norway, where it's time for the bronze and main finale for the men. We just uh, got our female world champion, Osbjörg Nørset, with a beautiful Dutz, well-deserved. <laughs> These are pictures of her. Yeah. Learning that she is the world champion 2021. And the winner of a car, no less. Happy about that. And I mean, it's so good to see, I mean, all these people. We've been getting some numbers in here. Around 5,000 people are actually gathered around to, to, to watch this spectacle unfold. And uh, 
if you're just tuning in, it's the right time to do it. I mean, we've been watching some spectacular dances all day, but this is the cream of the crop, the top of the pops, and other silly sayings. <laughs> That's Philip Julius Devor up there about to uh, dance for the bronze in a battle against Alexander Frostad. I have no doubt he'll be giving him is his all in the bronze final right now. Well, I'm sad to see Philip Julius not being able to compete for the gold. Oh, a double flip with a. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to I'm trying to read from his eyes whether or not that's exactly what he planned to do. We have to see the recap of that one. Yeah. That's one. Just makes the landing, doesn't he? You know, it's so hard to see the water surface when you're rotating. And landing slightly sideways can potentially break bones in your face. It can hurt. There's so much technique going into this. But I mean, this is one of our, uh, I wouldn't say oldest because he's not that old, but I mean, one of the, one of the grand old men of the sport, which is weird to say. And here's the young up-and-comer. Didn't even reach the finals, well, the, the quarterfinals last year. And now he's at the top, battling for the bronze. Alexander has everything to prove against the three-time world champion. Oh. Beautifully controlled. I'm sort of lost for words here. I mean, have we seen a full rotation with a tuck? I mean, normally uh, they, uh, <laughs> well, the referees probably have yeah. seen it. We haven't seen it yet in this competition. He saved it for last. He did. And you know, remaining calm in the air is so important. Like we've said before, you have around two seconds before you hit the water from your exit the dive tower. And uh, you have to know what you're doing. Huge splash. Which is also counted. I mean, it feels kind of silly recapping uh, the rules here right at the end. But of course, the, the, the main thing in Dutsing is owning the air. Owning more than More than almost anything else. Fearlessness. We're witnessing two majorly different styles here. It's going to be hard for the uh, judges to, uh, to pick a winner. They both are pretty you, happy. Are you for night? With their dutzes. Right, oh, oh, it's a split decision. Oh. Philip oh, Julius <laughs> needs to check his armband to see if he's actually the guy wearing black. Let's have a little chat with him. Gratulerer så mye. Hva føler du nå? Åh, det er deilig. Det var... Det har vært tungt, så det har vært vondt, men det var verdt det. Og hva tenkte du når du sto der oppe? Hadde du noen plan da, eller bare gøtsa deg og hoppa? Nei, jeg er jo jævla nervøs da. Nå må jeg prøve ikke å vise det. Men man er jo redd, og det går mye tanker gjennom hodet, og man lurer på hva de andre skal gjøre, og så er det det å finne riktig triks. Har du noen her som følger med i dag? Noen familie eller venner? Ja, mamma, pappa, broren min, masse venner, så det er veldig gøy, så jeg gleder meg til å hilse på dette. Hvem er første du skal fortelle, eller de har kanskje sittet og følt med nå? Hva sa du for noe? De har sittet og følt med hele veien. Ja, de sitter på VIP-en der og roper og skriker. Mamma har en plakat med navnet mitt på. Så det er veldig koselig, så det er... Gratulerer igjen med tredjeplass. Philip says his mother is in the audience with a big poster with his name on it, cheering him on. It's been a hard road for Philip Julius. He's talking a little bit about the process that when you're up there thinking about all the things that you're going to potentially do, what the other person is going to do. I mean, this is a whole brand new thing. I mean, the battle format is not something you normally did just do whatever, but now you have to adjust to what the other person might po possibly do. Right. So and next nobody up is, knows uh, better than these two next right. guys. Next I mean, these up guys is Kim and Dre and Arna, and uh, I was about to say, this is uh, going to be a very exciting final. 
these guys know each other's tricks. They know each other in and out. They need to pull out something spectacular, and they need to nail it in order to sadly knock the other person down. But I guess these guys don't necessarily see it that way. I think around. You know, like we were saying, the the competition is so cutthroat going from 24 to 8. I think they're, they can't believe it that they're the last two standing up here. Well, no huge surprise from uh, previous years. Uh, no, but you never know. You know, competition is getting so intense. Exactly, like with Alexander competing in the top four. But these two boys right here, of course, uh, Kim Andre, world champion. Arna still has, <laughs> I, I would say, you know, quote unquote, only the silver, but got knock knocked out last year in the finals. This is his time to shine. Kim Andre in black. Jumping first, I uh, imagine. Arna Haglund in white. Imagine what they're thinking right now. Taking a moment to himself. Arna is uh, known to get the crowd going. Kim Andre is more of the quiet, introspective type. He just wants to. Both big, big stars here in Norway. Yeah, definitely. Full focus. What are we going to see? <laughs> the crowd is going wild here. We don't know if you can hear them in the background, but... He's smiling. He looks happy. Look at that stretch at the end. Let's see if this holds up for That's first That's the extra place. two and a half meters that we're uh, adding this year. to the tuck and outstretched beautiful landing right at the last microsecond 41 feet from the top of the tower to the water surface it would seem he, he, he was doing exactly what he was planning to do and nailed it and so. now the pressure <laughs> is on arna <laughs> most of the i mean he asked for this arna how well i mean as one of the like i said before one of the inventors or you know the, the people who, who fought to get the battle format into the world championship he's now, he's now suffering because of it one of his good friends just delivered and he needs to up it he's taking his time up there been known for his speed and power out from the tower i imagine this is going to be nothing different power that's a, was that a 40 14 40 it certainly looked like it that is pretty insane discussing their jumps <laughs> they're just <laughs> they're just chilling in the water hanging out in the Four rotations. That is uh, that is pretty insane from from twelve and a half. I mean, that is insane. Yes, it's I'm been go. done, but from higher uh, higher up, it, uh, this is. Amazing. But just having the time to do four durations, but can you do, do rotations and then he looks nailing the landing. <sighs> the difficulty of that trick compared to the style of Kim Andre, how he effortlessly uh, executed it. But at the same time, Arna looked so relaxed in the air doing it, which uh, is going to be a really tough call for the judges. <sighs> well, we got to we gotta pick a winner. Well, we don't, luckily. Yeah, luckily we don't. I'm sure the judges will have a hard time with these two. 
Är de måste stoppa platsen här? Two complete different. Freestyle dutches. Oj! Oj! Ja! Two good friends. About to find out who the champion is. Ja, Arne, hvordan var det å stå der oppe og høre, egentlig det gjelder begge to, hvordan var det å stå og høre publikum bygge dere opp før dere skulle hoppe? Altså, var det mye nervositet der oppe? Ja, helt nydelig. Altså, det er fantastisk å ha så mye folk, høre jubelen, og selvfølgelig er vi nervøs. Men er du nervøs for selve hoppet, eller for at det skal skje noe galt? Nei, ikke helt da. Det er bare en sånn merkelig feeling når du står i en konkurranse, sist man ut. Du blir alltid litt nervøs. Ja, det skjønner jeg, og nå får dere straks se... Kim, hvordan er følelsen din nå? Følelsen kan føltes ganske bra, ass. Well, no big surprises as I'm translating here. Arna is talking about being nervous, but not about the jump or anything else, just being the last out. Kim Andre! Gratulerer! Kim Andre! the winner of the World Dutch oh, Championship 2021, and how well-deserving <laughs> is it? Consistently Kim, how do you feel to take the World Cup again? Enno en titel. You took it in 2019. How do you feel to take it again? It feels good. It feels good. Hva tenkte du når du hoppet i sted? Arne sitt hopp fra min vinkel så jævlig bra ut. Men tydeligvis landet han litt dårlig da. Jeg skjønner at du er veldig teknisk god. Er det fordi du øver mye, eller hva mener du når du sier det? Nå kommer jeg faktisk på at jeg har hoppet alle hoppene mye uten propp. Jeg har nettopp riftet trommet inn. Oi, det skjer litt uhell når man hopper fra en sånn høyde kan jeg sette meg. Sæland. Har du en familie som sitter og følger med? Jeg håper familien sitter der hjemme. Mamma, pappa, Camilla, begge hunene mine. Har du noen planer om å feire etterpå? Jeg skal begynne å feire noe. Hvis dere har lyst til å ta et lite kamera på meg, så har jeg en kjæreste her, og hun skal jeg fyre ut i vannet. Du skal kaste henne ut, du. Jeg skal kaste henne ut, du. Ok, ok. Kanskje vi får begynne å se hva... Oh, he's talking about throwing his girlfriend in the water. I mean, humble... Da har vi Kim André. Nye vinneren. Vinneren fra 2021. Og han er på vei til å finne kjæresten sin, som hørte meg riktig om at du skulle bli... Oi, sant? Og der hun går. Hopp, 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 hopp. Oi, oi, oi. This is how winners... <laughs> it's a family affair, I guess. I bet she's happy about that. He was also talking about hoping his dogs were watching him at home. You know, all those little translation things that you guys on the international interwebs are uh, wondering about. <sighs> Such a great winner. Such a great winner and so well-deserved. Fourth place last year. Winner this year. I mean, he had to take it back from uh, 2019, where he actually just won the whole thing out of basically nowhere. Right. But uh, but now he's becoming like a household name with the Dutch as me. Yeah, he's uh, definitely uh, one of the greats, along, of course, with Arna Hugo. Right. Who uh, <laughs> is second. Well, he got the silver, and he got the silver last year. I mean, who knows? Maybe next year. <sighs> While we're uh, looking at uh, a world champion and his girlfriend swimming, we need to talk about the Bruno Award as well, we which, is, which is going to be uh, handed out. Not only is there gold, silver, and bronze, but we have the Bruno Prize. And uh, the prize was named after one of the founding fathers of Dutch, who died in the 80s. He was a, a guitarist. Uh, and uh, the Bruno Award is named after him, and it goes actually for the best classic Dutch, or it's like a cred prize. Like, the judges decide who who in this season has uh, really uh, shown themselves in, in a positive way. Yeah, and also like a, a lifetime achievement-ish sort of thing. Like, 
He's done a lot for the sport. He's done a lot for uh, uh, a hug from uh, 2020's winner, passing the mantle, or passing it back. Passing on the torch. Well, Emil, uh, again, out with an injury. And we were talking about his, uh, Kim Andre's uh, injury as well. Not as harsh, but he had a, a punctured eardrum or right. something like punctured that. punctured eardrum. He just, you know, landed a little bit sideways and uh, straight on his ear. So who knows if he can hear all of the <laughs> probably congratulatory could. messages coming his way right now. And here we have the results. I'm happy to see the international uh, internationals climbing up. Finland, Spain. Because it is a growing sport all around the world. And uh, next year, of course, we're more than thrilled to have more international competitors with us. Right. And I think, I mean, every week something new is happening within the Dutch community. Only yesterday, a Norwegian named Ken Stornes uh, Dutch from 31.3 meters okay, or about that, yeah. 200, sorry, 102 <laughs> feet, 102 feet yesterday, uh, which is, it's unbelievable. You need, you need some control to pull that off. I mean, we've said this many times today, but <laughs> please to all the young uh, men and women out there watching this, start dutzing, but start from a slightly Start from height. the side of the pool. I mean, you could see that the rescue crew was here ready to dive in if, if there were any injuries. Fortunately, no one, uh, no one needed to be saved uh, today in any capacity, but uh, don't, don't try this at home. I think a lot of them, a lot of the competitors here probably felt it a little bit. Landing on your back from uh, 12 and a half meters up is not a uh, a nice sensation. Definitely not. <sighs> what a day. Couldn't ask for more. Last year we had uh, rain and winds people almost slipping out of the tower up there. Right, that was a big problem last year. It yeah. was so slippery on the top. And uh, this year, everyone everyone seemed to maintain control. Had a little bit of drizzle, but that's just normal in Norway. So to all of you uh, international uh, watchers, start dutzing. Who knows, maybe a competition will uh, arrive near you and you can uh, Qualify. Qualify to the World Championship. Also, keep on filming. Put stuff on Instagram. It will get picked up and uh, people will watch it. And uh, who knows, maybe you'll get a wild card from there. All of these different ways to actually get into it. Right. And the international community is just growing. We had some sort of like 40 different nations around the world are now actively dutching. Right, I think 42 nations across the world. And that's what's so great, you know, the, the world record for uh, for men uh, until yesterday was 28.3 meters by an American named Seamus McGowan. And uh, yesterday the Norwegians took back took back that record. Yeah, and he, he's not even a, a part of the, <laughs> the competition here today. He's just one of those... I'm going to be careful about calling him crazy because he's huge and probably will kick my butt. So I'm not going to say that, but... But some level of craziness <laughs> when you jump from uh, 102 feet has to be uh, has to be expected. Yeah, but I mean, imagine the, the portion of control over your body. I mean, these guys are top athletes, all of them. So... Uh, <laughs> That being said, let's get ready for uh, <laughs> the big prize, new car for... New car from Citroën for one year with your picture on the car. See, if I knew that, I would have entered the competition and won it. These guys are going to be signing autographs all day long. I imagine they already are, though. 
And here he is, Kim and Drake Knudsen, winner of the Dust World Championship in 2021. Take it back to Mantle. Wondering what he's gonna do. You just stand up there and receive your award. Time for Kim to relax now. Ingrid Brew, world uh, champion uh, last year, who uh, will be giving him uh, some of the prizes today. He's getting a scooter as well. Nobody mentioned that. <laughs> The spectacle is over, all the boat people are now uh, drifting out to sea. I don't know, I don't even know if we counted those among the 5,000, but there's been a bunch of uh, boats. I mean, because that. of uh, Corona, we've had some uh, capacity issues here, but... Uh, it didn't seem to, to bother the Dutzers. It really is getting bigger and bigger. Every year. And what better way to spend a Saturday than uh, dipping in the ocean and uh, watching some crazy people. And the Bruner Award, we can see, goes to Alexander Frosto. That's so nice. He plays fourth, but he received the Bruner Award. Really, like you said before, lives and breathes the whole Dutch community. Right, and the judges decide who the Bruno Prize goes to. Yeah. He's gonna be carrying that mantle for, uh, for at least a year. It's a good consolation prize for getting for Last year, that uh, prize went to uh, Leo. No, I'm sorry, 2019. Leo Nocturne. It was only uh, 13 at the time. Yeah. Of course, this year, our youngest competitor. 10 years old. 10 years old. And during the break, I don't know if they, they actually showed this, but uh, we had some young boys. Uh, I think one of them was actually 8 years old, jumping from 11 and a half meters. So it's never too early. And uh, judging from the age of some of uh, our competitors, never too late either. Of course, the acrobatics portion of it might get a little hindered. Los Bugnership, women's world champion, well deserved. Super happy. And you know, Olivia, who placed in second, she's only 14 years old, so who knows what she would have done with a car. Yeah. <laughs> well, one happy dad, I would assume. <laughs> Let's shake it. Let's open it. Let's celebrate. You know, some studies have shown that extreme sports competitors are able to retain so much information that uh, they're better at handling risk-filled risk situations. I imagine these guys are, are, are pretty well equipped to do that, exactly that. And with the bright, shining sun, Happy, smiling faces, people on porches, people in boats, people in the water, acrobatics beyond the works. I think it's time to sort of sign out. Fortunately, it's over, over for this year, but uh, we're already looking forward to next year and uh, what happens in between. We're so happy you could join us today. Keep on dancing. From my heart to you, all of the people watching, listening, go out and dance. Send in your uh, stuff, and we hope to see you here live next year. In Oslo, Norway. And with these
these beautiful pictures. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Dr. Spa. I'm Stephanie Scabo, and we'll see you next year. We'll see you next year. Andre og Asbjørg, hvordan føles det å ha vunnet i dag? Det føles dritbra. Nå vant jeg VM andre gang, så har jeg vunnet serien sammenlagt. Det blir ikke bedre enn det. Og hva var her borte? Nei, det kan ikke bli noe bedre enn førsteplass, så det er sykt deilig. Endelig bare være der man skal være. Respekt, ass. De jentene har blitt helt syke. Men vi mangler noen jenter, så... Ja, prøver å rekruttere. Sy... Ja, ja. For det første. Hvis det er noen jenter der hjemme, og gutter, men jenter hovedsakelig, så har jeg lyst til å dødse. Det var fire stykker med nå. Det er bare å øve litt, så kanskje har du 20 000 og en bil. Så... Gjør det. Jeg godtar gjerne litt konkurranse. Det er veldig velkommen. Ja. Så kjøp en badedrakt som sitter når du dødser. Og så kom deg opp i tårnet. Begynn på en meter, så tar det videre. Gratulerer så mye med det, men vi skal feire litt i kveld. Vi skal feire. Jeg skal ta meg en god dusj, og så blir det bort hit. Gratulerer så mye! Oi, her er det helt fantastisk. Oi, her kommer det seiershopp! Hoppet vinneren, oi, og begge vinnerne! Ordentlig seiers avslutning der altså, med et plask. Takk for i dag!